Ginger nut biscuits, the best. Anna's got a surprise for me. I don't know what it is. I'm coming. She's coming. Where's my pants? <laughs> I've been clearing out your boxer shot drawer. Hang on, I don't get to clear out your underwear. I can if you like. But all this is, this is going in the bin. You're throwing all that away! <laughs> Hang on then, look, 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 stop. Right, I've checked them out. I do all the washing and I know which ones you wear. Mm -hmm. And since we've been together, most of these haven't been worn. Like lots of years. I do tolerate a lot. You go through my underwear drawer and throw <laughs> out my underwear. Right. But also, no, stop I'll telling have... me to hang on. You're the one that's throwing out my underwear. Okay, that's I don't know. But what about these? Do you think these still fit? Oh, oh you've yeah. got loads of pairs. Of... Oh, no, they're nice. Those Andrew Christian. Yeah, but they're perfect for me. <laughs> They've got a bulge there. Look, I'm gender neutral now. Look, hang on, hang on. Look, what these ones? <laughs> How many pairs of my underwear have you got on? <laughs> this is not going to redeem you for throwing out. You can't throw these out. Hang on, hang on, this pair. These are super dry. <laughs> That's what I've just picked up here, look. <laughs> You've never ever worn them in six years, seven years. Right? I haven't finished yet. Oh, not these. <laughs> these are lovely. <laughs> You're so precious about your pants. Look at them. Put them on. How old are they? I'm going to put them over the top of these ones first then. You can't wear my pants. Because they've got a, they've got a thingy, a crutch yeah, at the bottom. If I could just stitch that in like that. Just stitch it in. Mm. So you're throwing out all my under are you keeping those or throwing them out? <laughs> the ones I'm wearing, maybe I should keep uh, them. Look, hang on, I haven't finished. Look, there's another pair. It's got pair. all my polo rags for Ren. This is really expensive. Why do you wear them? I don't know. Look, I've got another pair. Oh, they're nice, they are. <laughs> How many have you got on? Oh, that's it. Look, they're see-through. Oh. Do you like them? Yeah, well, I do like them because they're mine. <laughs> of course I like them. <laughs> you don't have to sell them to me. God. So you're chucking all, even my Polar Alpha Ren ones? Yeah, because they just take up space. And your drawer is overspilling. Okay. Oh, do you want to use them as dusters? No, because that would be a permanent reminder then. Every <laughs> time I use them to soak up oil, like, oh, there's nothing wrong with these. These are super dry. You can't sell them. No, I don't want to sell them. I didn't want to sell them. <laughs> <laughs> Another beautiful day in paradise here. Look at the, the weather today. Just another, what are we, mid-30s, honey? Yep. Let's just have a quick look in the shade. Oh, no, we're more, more than that. We are 38, is that? 38, 30, about 80. So, no, that's 28, 29 in the shade. Oh, yeah, 28. What well, did I say? 38? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting drunk on the heat. Yeah. Okay, so what are you doing, Miss Anna? Testing the fall. Oh, you doing? <laughs> it's doing your <you> soft. <laughs> that's what Come I carry on. the chlorine on. That blue check. Brilliant. Have you got a whistle? That's for lifeguards. Yeah. I'm not a lifeguard. Well, lifeguards You're normally. A lifeguard. Do, lifeguards you? normally do the pool, the pool checks, don't oh, they? Do they? Yeah. Um, You're my lifeguard. Have you got? Oh God, it's hot, isn't it? Yeah. Don't move too fast. You might faint. Whew. God, that's looking very tempting, isn't it? Wow. Beautiful. Right, and there we go, look. Okay. Wait ten seconds. Are you reading? Are you pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> 
do some more flowering in. See there, look. It's still okay, but we need a bit more in. So which one are you looking at? This one this here? This one, yeah, yep. free chlorine. And then we've got the pH value, which is about 7.4, which is perfect, right in the middle. Well done. Um, Alkalinity is good, hardness. Yeah, we're okay, just some more chlorine. So we're just off to get some chlorine from the barn. I don't know why you don't want me to put it next to the barn for you. Next to the pool, you mean? I mean the pool, sorry. I, I want it out of the way so nobody can mess with it. Okay. And it's nice and cool in there. It's just okay. out of the way for any accident. Yes. We tell the insurers it's because we're very responsible with our chemicals and we abide by the French equivalent to the Kosh regulations. <laughs> no, just being sensible, that's all. <laughs> Oh, it smells absolutely lovely. I can't stand it. It makes my eyes water. So I worked for six years. I used to work in leisure management, and I worked for six years in pools. So I absolutely love the smell of chlorine. I have to open that, let that go out, because it makes my eyes water. It makes me bark. Really? Yeah. Oh, God, it's just awful. How many do we need? Six? Ten. Ten. Well, I can put them in. That's why I use a saucer. So I'm not carrying them all in my hand. Mm. There you go. Oh. I'd rather cut onions than sniff that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I've just seen, Pardon? just seen, look, an old picture of me, look. So many of our viewers don't know I was in... The police service. My father was in the police for over 30 years. And there's me on duty. That's obviously me on the right there. I was in Hampshire Police. Um, and that's down on the waterfront. Uh, we had uh, tunics and uh, formal wear that day because it was a ceremony we were going to. Nowadays, of course, you're not allowed to wear your tunics outside at all. All this health and safety nonsense. You've got to wear stab vests and stuff all the time. Anyway, in a previous life, that wasn't it, honey? Yeah. Still got my helmet somewhere. And my father's oh, helmet. Yeah, the gendarme, if you want their uniform, it's much nicer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. You just want to stay on it, open that and follow it into the Good filter. idea. This is called the uh, strainer. Off we go. And they're quick dissolve or slow dissolve? Uh, they do dissolve quite quickly, yeah. Job done. And then we'll test it again afterwards? or? No, no, no. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Every day I test it. Well done, honey. I've got OCD with pool testing. <laughs> it's good though, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, geese. Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. The ducks in the background. I don't know if you can see the grass behind me. It's just so brown and yellow where it's been burnt um, in the sun. I'm not complaining because we were told that the summers here are really strong. Um, and then you have that change in the winter where you have the um, crisp and dry winter period. So you have some very defined seasons. So I'm not complaining on the sun. One job I wanted to do uh, when we we're in here doing the heat exchanger for the pool, I'm at the pool plant room at the moment, is to sort out the underwater lights. And I've had the underwater light out in the pool. It's like a sealed beam unit from an old 60s car, 60s and 70s car. All of British Leyland cars had these Lucas sealed beam, 12 volt sealed beam units. Um, so you didn't replace the bulb, you replaced the sealed beam and it's like one of those. It's quite heavy on power. It's 12 volt, but it's quite uh, it's quite heavy on, on the wattage. And uh, that end is fine. So uh, I'm not getting 12 volts at the pool end. So it must be, there must be a step down transformer in the plant room. So that's just what I'm checking now. So this is the, um, the power coming into the plant room. And on the right hand side there is the circuit for uh, the underwater lights. So I'm just gonna check, I'm gonna take that out. I've isolated it obviously. And I'm just going to have a look, see what's going on in there and see if there's anything obvious.
Well, that is a surprise because I was half expecting to see in this circuit a uh, step down transformer. So that's a bit odd. I need to find out what's going on. Somewhere we've got 240 volts coming out of here and it ends up in 12 volts at the pool end. But as you can see, this cable trough, a uh, cable run, disappears into protective um, conduit and it comes out the other end at the pool. So how on earth, how on earth are we getting 240 volts in here and only 12 volts out? So just having a quick look, there's not a tremendous amount I can do. These two cables here coming in, one is terminated there. They're both ground. This one has been chopped and this is from the other one. And it looks like it lived in a place somewhere, but there's nowhere obvious for it to go. And if that's 12 volts, then it wouldn't go anywhere near that rack at the top anyway. The only other one that's adrift at the moment is this one here. And this one looks like it feeds into this breaker here. This is the one that's not got a, it's not got a feed out. And according to the legend on the front, that's solar. Um, now the solar pump is not powered. It is already working. It's a, um, it's this this time of control here, which might be a retrospectively put on. Um, that is controlling the pump here, which is the only electrical. That's the only electrical thing for the solar. The rest of it's just water heating through convection so i'm going to put i'm going to bring the meter out just check for continuity on these and then i'm going to put 12 volts down there and see what happens from a battery um, and see if that triggers the underwater light uh we'll just check resistance on that just to see what sort of resistance we've got okay Put a battery down and see what happens. Let's go and have a look at the pool. It's going to be so difficult in this light to actually see anything. Not even a glow. It's just just uh, here the lamp. I tell you what, actually thinking about it, I've never had this off. This is where the sump is, and apparently there's a sump pump that is designed to take out any water that sits under the pool. Very strange. It could be a case of the cabling coming through to here. And the 12 volt transformer is in there and then it goes to the light there that's the only other place we'll check that in a minute uh we know that one of those breakers in here is feeding the sump so i suppose the next job is just to lift that sump up lift that sump hatch up and see if there's anything in there other than the pump you never know there might be a transformer in there let's go and have a look well i've made a couple of keys for this there's absolutely no way that's budging i cannot get it to even move it doesn't look like it's come up in years <sighs> nope. can you see the the cement that is cement there that is, that is hard, look at that, that is hard cement, and that's over the joint. So if that cement has gone into there when they've done the pointing, it means that this hatch has not lifted since. And it is tight, look, it's all tight. I've tried to to um, tried to get some movement by putting in a, a, a screwdriver here and just seeing if I can shift it, but you know that is not happening. So I might have to think about this one. Sorry, guys, that's a job that's not finished. The mystery of the underwater lights continues.
Hello, perfect Peter. Hello, honey. I don't know how you're surviving in this heat. Well, I'm going on the bike and then going into the workshop, so I'm not spending all my time out here. Good. Good. But uh, do you remember uh, a few episodes back, I bought myself a very cheap MTX, which we discovered, ironically, was one of your bikes when you were young, which is amazing because I've always wanted one of these. It used to have a, I used to have a poster on my bedroom wall when I was 16, 17 years ago. So one came up cheap with a gearbox fault and uh, we've been having fun with it and because uh, the gearbox fault meant it was difficult getting into first, virtually impossible to get into first. So we were kind of pulling away in second and slipping the clutch and that was never going to work long term. So I kind of promised myself to do a repair of that and while I was at it I've done what I call a, um, uh, it's a kind of, it's not a full restoration, it's a hint at a restoration. So come around, I'll show you what I've done. For example, I've had all of this off, uh, headlamp, headlamp, that's replaced. I've got a whole set of plastics, new plastics. And then what I do is I take everything off and then just clean up, service, repaint, rub down, polish, and then reassemble. So this whole thing is done, if you look here, uh, the fork blades, I've done all the fork blades. I've even had the wheel off, cleaned the hub, lacquered the hub, cleaned the spokes, polished the rims. But little things like, little detail things like this, I'll take that off. And So if you stood back, I don't know, 10, if you stood back 10 feet, it would look like a proper full restoration. Like a brand new bike. It would look like a brand new bike. I'll show you what else I've done here. Look, I've had the, uh, I've done the head and barrels there. You can see I've done the radiator and the radiator cap is off. Um, this was my problem in here. I don't know if you can see down there. You see that? Yeah. And there's another one that sits on top of it. I don't know if I can come in. So it's kind of like this. Yeah? Yeah. And the bottom one is there. The top one, a tooth was missing. And the tooth was adrift in the crankcase. So I was very lucky it didn't do more damage to the crankcase. So I finally found a chap in Thailand that's got one of those. So, um... Yeah, very fragile. This is a clutch basket here. Um, very fragile gearbox. You can see there's a lot going on in a very small area. These are quite yeah. powerful. These are 20 horsepower. These. Well, on the gear bit, it's like that there. It's one of these teeth have come off, haven't they? Correct. Yeah, absolutely spot on. They're cast. They're cast, these bits. So um, they're very strong, but very brittle. Um, I haven't done any of the back here. That's to come. I've had the exhaust pipe off. Uh, and I've polished that and then there was a little thing like this rubber was missing so it was leaking uh, exhaust gas all around here so I've cleaned up all that oil and and stuff so I'll touch up the frame I'm going to respray this swinging arm in silver um, I've got a couple of um, new indicators for the back already broken these are yucky shocky yang chong cheap so why have you got new indicators? What's wrong with these ones? No, no, these are the new ones. Oh, they are? Oh, yeah, right, then he okay. had some. He obviously broke the last ones and had some little tiny horrible things which also broke. Um, but these aren't. These are an exact copy of the original. But these are yucky shocky. These are made of old washing up liquid bottles, and they're oh, just wow. awful. They look good though, don't they? Look they look fine, but they won't last five minutes, unfortunately. Uh, this is new. This is a common thing that guys do when they wreck their bikes. So they get hacksaw and they just start chopping the. The rear apart so that's 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 new which i've always wanted this is part of the plastic set so that's new so all of that is sort of this area here look yeah uh, is new um yeah so so it's what it's a mild it's a mild restoration um and look i'll show you something else which is when i first bought the bike underneath this is the crankcase that's come off this side so it sits on the bike there, look like that. Yeah. And underneath, I saw that when I got it home. I didn't see it on inspection. I thought, oh, I know what that is. Um, I've seen this before. Something's broken inside the engine. That made sense to me in my mind because I knew that I couldn't get first gear. So I knew something was wrong. Something's broken in the engine, flown around inside and then decided to break its way out. So I was expecting to see on the inside of the crankcase, a dirty great crack there. There's absolutely, look, there's no damage to that yeah. at all. So what on earth has he poured all that sealant on for? The only thing I can think of is the gasket that he put on wasn't sealing correctly down here. And that was his attempt. I've never, ever, I just can't work that out. 
That is bizarre. Look, look, there's nothing underneath it. Yeah. So we've got the crankcase. Uh, and, you know, as with everything else on the bike, before it goes back on, it gets a degrease, a clean, and in this case, a repaint. So um, all I need to do is just, um, I just need to mask off the remaining, that's a kickstart seal, and that's the uh, power valve um, uh, mechanism, that just needs to be covered. But I was just saying to Anna, um, my, uh, my RD is more of a show bike, and the quality of the aluminium on these crankcases is absolutely superb. And let me just show you, look, this is, this is worn, this is worn because the, your foot is here on the brake all the time. So your foot rubs up and down that and it's just worn the paint off. It's not hard to take the paint off. I'll put a bit of auto sole on there, look, like that. And then a little bit of wet and dry. Uh, not wet and dry, um, yeah, it is wet and dry, this, isn't it? Just let me show you just what you can do if we did the whole thing. And I get my polishing mop. Right, get ready, Miss Sam. It's going to be a bit noisy, this. Okay. It's very tempting to do the whole bike, to do the whole crankcase like this. Can you see that? It's like chrome. So you'd like to have it all chrome? You'd like to have it. I haven't got time to do it because it's mm. quite fiddly. Well, not only that, you wanted it as it would be new, didn't you? Yes, I'm doing it. Right, I'm signing off for recording now, Mr. Ray, because this video is going to be long enough. And we're going out tonight. Yes. What are we going to do tonight? We're going to Argenton for a, a Japanese stroke Thai meal. Well, they do Japanese... They do Japanese, oh, yeah, Thai, Thai, and Ch um, was it Chinese? No, they don't. It's not it Chinese. Don't, no, no Korean. Oh, I don't know. It's not Xinhua, is it? I can't remember. Anyway, they do lovely food yeah. in this place. Can't remember the name of the place. We're going to go there, have a meal, and Le we'll walk. we'll continue this video in our next video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we're going out afterwards. Oh yeah, to um, done the palestel. They're doing, they're doing Latin, Latin dancing. Samba. I love samba. Salsa. And salsa. <laughs> <laughs>